Having now not only reached this point in time in my main Sengoku Jidai series, but also having now made a full video discussing the life of Miyamoto Musashi, Japan's most famous samurai duelist, I think it is a perfect time to at last look to cover the iconic Samurai Trilogy, a set of films starring none other than the legendary Toshiro Mifune as Musashi himself, based largely off of the popular fictional Musashi story written by Eiji Yoshikawa. These three films, Samurai 1, Miyamoto Musashi, Samurai 2, Duel at Ichijoji Temple, and Samurai 3, Duel at Gunryu Island, each come together to weave a fascinating narrative of loyalty, honor, love, and the pursuit of combat perfection. And although they are not entirely accurate to the real life of Miyamoto Musashi, there is still plenty to discuss and admire about this classic trilogy of films. Miyamoto Musashi is one of the most interesting and respected figures in Japanese history often regarded by many as one of the greatest samurai duelists and swordsmen of all time. His life story, the deeds he would accomplish, and the writings he would produce have all gone down to cement his legendary status in history. Check out the recent video I did all about Musashi if you want to learn more about the real figure he was. But his exploits have led to him being popularized to no end, as numerous fictional retellings of his life have emerged ever since his death in 1645, with perhaps none more famous today than the writings of Eiji Yoshikawa, who in the 1930s wrote his own take on Musashi's life. This sensational fictional take on the story of Miyamoto Musashi has often become the popular view of the historical figure, and has been made even more widespread being covered a number of times on film. Yet the most iconic of all portrayals of Yoshikawa's Musashi story has to be that of the three films produced by Toho Studios in the mid-1950s, starring the up-and-coming actor Toshir Mifune, as he was quickly becoming a legend of Japanese cinema in his own right. I have talked a lot about Mifune a lot on this channel as it is, and will for sure be talking more about him in videos to come. Mifune has gone down in history as the greatest of all actors to portray samurai on film, and for good reason, not just because he did it so many times, but also because his most prominent roles were that of Samurai, from Seven Samurai to Throne of Blood, Yojimbo, and so many more. But to top it all off, he also had the honor of playing the role of Miyamoto Musashi himself, something he almost seems born to do. The Samurai Trilogy was released from 1954 to 1956 and was directed by Hiroshi Inagaki. It follows the same narrative of Yoshikawa's Musashi story, which is not entirely accurate to history and is more of a fantastical fictional take on Musashi's life. It does follow some of the major events Musashi took part in, but plenty of it is its own story. This of course means I am not going to look to judge it too heavily based on its historical accuracy, but because it does follow the history of Musashi's life to some degree, which I will get into, there will be some spoilers ahead for those of you who have not seen these films. Also, I need to mention that I have not read the original story written by Eiji Yoshikawa, so this is just my review of the film trilogy itself. Now, each film works in a way to sort of evolve the character of Musashi himself, often referred to in the story as Takezo. Musashi faces a grand arc of finding out who he is as a man and what he truly desires in life, caught between the passions of those around him and his own love of swordsmanship with the pursuit of perfection. The first film in the Samurai Trilogy, simply titled Miyamoto Musashi, is essentially about the taming of Musashi himself. He starts out as a young and ambitious man who goes off to fight in the Battle of Sekigahara in hopes of winning fame and fortune. Of course, in real history, it appears Musashi was never at the actual Battle of Sekigahara itself in 1600, but rather took part in the fighting that occurred in Kyushu during the overall Sekigahara conflict. The battle scenes we are shown of Sekigahara are brilliant for the time, especially given the fact that this was one of Toho's first ever films shot in color. In this story, Musashi fights for the Western Army, which is defeated, forcing him to return home from the battle, where he is then quickly hunted down as a criminal, not only for bursting past the border guard post, but also for returning home without his friend Matahachi, who himself abandoned Musashi, along with two women they had met in the rural countryside, a mother named Oko and her daughter Akemi. With many people believing Musashi to have either led Matahachi to his death or even killed him, the hunt is on for Musashi himself. This is where the film almost starts to appear like Rambo First Blood, with everyone combing the forest to find where Musashi is hiding, while Musashi himself acts like a wild beast prowling in the woods. 
Eventually though, through the guidance of a monk named Takwan, Musashi is, for lack of a better word, tamed. Yet not before getting himself involved in a complicated romance with a young girl from the village named Otsu, who was originally engaged to marry his old friend Matahachi. After Musashi goes through a sort of metamorphosis by being locked away within Himeji Castle to educate himself and tame his spirit, he sets out into the world. This is where the first film ends, with him leaving Otsu behind and setting forth on his Musha Shugyo, his warrior pilgrimage, where he intends to seek out opponents to hone his skill with the sword. By the end of the first film, Musashi has found purpose and meaning, but he is far from finding fulfillment and deeper understanding. As you may already be aware, none of this really appears to be accurate to Musashi's life story. However, the next film, Duel at Ichijoji Temple, does begin to follow more of a real event that occurred, this being Musashi's battles against the Yoshioka Sword School in Kyoto. While the first film had been all about the taming of Musashi, the second film is all about the refining of Musashi. We never addressed his skill with the sword too heavily prior to this point, which makes the warrior pilgrimage he has undertaken in the second film more important. Some time has passed since Musashi left Himeji and set out into the world, and although he now looks to hone his skills and become a master of swordsmanship, it is revealed early on that he still has much to learn about himself, as a monk early on advises him that he is too sure of himself. He is too strong. This creates a fascinating narrative as Musashi has to continually check himself and ensure that he controls his temper and approaches each situation with humility. It is heavily implied that there is much going on in Musashi's head in the second film as he tries to discover who he truly is, as he reunites with Otsu and is remorseful for leaving her, showing that he does truly love her. But it is hard to fully believe that when it is so clear that his main goal is perfecting his skill in combat. His drive to live by the sword causes him to continually reject Otsu and every other woman who throws themselves at him with him eventually challenging prominent members of the Yoshioka School of Swordsmanship in Kyoto, who he continually bests one by one. If anything, this is the most action-packed of the entire samurai trilogy, and at the end, after defeating countless other samurai, you truly feel like he has grown not only as a warrior, but also as a man. It really feels like he has reached the apex of his skill, and has really come full circle since the beginning of the film. However, it is also in the second film that we are first introduced to none other than Sasaki Kojiro, Musashi's greatest rival. I love the way this series portrays Kojiro, as he is not shown as necessarily a villain, but rather an anti-hero who almost walks the exact same path as Musashi himself, a swordsman who is out to make a name for himself in the world. He's portrayed as someone who states things as a matter of fact, and knows exactly where he wants to be in the world while also understanding where he is. He is extremely cunning and manipulative, yet not in ways that paint him as really evil, making him easily steal every scene he is in. Both he and Musashi come to view each other with respect and admiration, as Kojiro is shown to be equally as deadly as Musashi himself. The final film, Duel at Ganryu Island, is the culmination of everything, as Musashi and Kojiro finally are set to face off. This is perhaps the most introspective of all three films, as although Musashi appears to have mastered the way of the sword, he is still shown to be conflicted about what he truly desires in life. It is here for a while he goes off to live and work in a small farming village. This is great because it connects with Miyamoto Musashi's real views on commoners. In Musashi's Book of Five Rings, he addresses his belief that common people below the samurai class are just as determined and valuable as samurai themselves. And this is portrayed very well in the film, as he lives amongst those who socially would normally be considered beneath him, yet instead he finds fulfillment in taking part in their lifestyle, comparing aspects of their routines as identical to the study of swordsmanship itself. Inevitably, he of course finally comes forth to duel Kojuro and it is by far one of the greatest samurai duels ever brought to film. You see, throughout the entirety of the trilogy, Musashi is able to dispatch most enemies in seemingly one swing. However, his duel with Kojiro shows Musashi challenged like never before, as both of them continue to exchange blows and reposition. In the end, with Musashi's victory, the only words he has left to say was that Sasaki Kojiro had been the greatest swordsman he will ever face. Altogether, each film in the Samurai Trilogy comes together to weave a compelling story regardless of historical accuracy. It's the journey of a man in search of meaning and on the road to a greater destiny, emerging from humble origins to become one of the greatest samurai who ever lived. 
yet his path comes to impact many, as people are drawn to him in ways he never anticipated. And there's plenty I could go on to say about other characters in the films as well, but I'm going to leave that out for the sake of spoilers. What is interesting to remember though, is that Musashi's duel with Sasaki Kojiro was never the end of his real story. Musashi lived around another three decades after his duel against Kojiro. He had so much more life to live, and so many more strides he made. Ending at the duel at Gunryu Island is really only half of Musashi's story. But I do completely understand why this event gets chosen as the real climax of his life. It definitely is a natural choice for the real high point in his career. And ending with this thrilling duel against a figure who is largely considered his equal is much more interesting than ending with him writing the Book of Five Rings while living as a hermit in a cave. So really, although the trilogy ends his story rather early, I can understand why. What we are still left with is a gripping evaluation of a samurai's pursuit of perfection and deeper wisdom. Which even further excels given the excellent cinematography and editing on display. But on top of that, the trilogy really stands out for its use of color at the time. As I mentioned earlier, these were some of the first films Toho would produce in color, and it really is a great change of pace that makes things really pop. Normally I'm a fan of black and white samurai films, given the fact that the majority of classic samurai cinema going from the 1950s to 1960s were in black and white, setting a unique yet characterized tone and atmosphere. But for the Samurai Trilogy, I don't think I could see them in any other way besides color, as there are some truly striking visuals that color really helps to define. But besides that, what really needs to be mentioned is the phenomenal score by Ikuma Dan. The main theme of the Samurai Trilogy easily stands out in my opinion as one of the greatest pieces of music in any Samurai film, rivaling that of the classic themes in films like Seven Samurai and Kagemusha. Seriously, this music will get in your head and it won't ever leave. And of course, I mean that in a good way. Now normally, if I was reviewing each of these films individually, I would give them each one of my usual ratings. But instead, being that this is a trilogy, I'm going to choose to just strongly recommend them. The Samurai Trilogy is a classic, a must see for any fan of Samurai Cinema and Toshiro Mifune. A fun historical fiction story with elements of real history, real figures, and events, with beautiful cinematography and fantastic musical accompaniment. Yet on top of that, these films are easier to watch than a lot of other samurai films I review, being that not only are they available through the Criterion Collection and channel, but also they are all on HBO Max, which really is a great excuse for you to go and watch them. But with that said, have you seen the Samurai Trilogy? If so, what do you think about it? And also, what other films about Miyamoto Musashi do you enjoy? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell if you enjoyed this video and found it to be most interesting.